Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to work on a power supply. This will be variable and quite useful in different ways that I'll show you at the end. Uh, this is a 3D printed body that we're working on. We've got on the left side here is the input. This system will be able to handle 6 volt to 60 volt input. We've got ports for uh, XT60 connector and then some uh, screw on connectors for like speaker connections that are really good for uh, different type of inputs and uh, give you somewhat of a temporary and somewhat uh, static connection. Uh, the display will go in this empty box here and then at the top we have a vent that we're looking at. On the other side here we've got the output. This will be able to do 0 volts up to 50 volts up to 15 amps. I don't believe it can handle 50 volts at 15 amps but it can do 10 amps at around 40 volts, which is good for charging the batteries that I normally use. And then again, we have the same connectors, the XT60 and some um, push-on connectors. Um, we also have uh, a flange at the top for the vent, and then a tube to go down to the circuit board, which you'll see as we uh, install that. So next we're going to the bench top and start assembling this together. All right, we've got all our pieces printed out and other parts set up for our assembly. We've got ourselves the actual electronics. We have an input output side, LCD display that will give us our ability to see what's going on but also change the voltage and amperage as we need. We've got the input and output plates. If you notice I just went ahead and integrated the text um, for two reasons. Uh, that way it's very readable and you know immediately but also it it's goes all the way through so there's ventilation. If you notice there's a fan there. It can get warm when you're running it at high amperage. So we've set it up to um, have a vent hole at the top and uh, take care of that. So it'll suck air into those letters and then it'll expel the heat at the top. And then the front part there we have you know, where the display will go. We've got our XT60 connectors. We've got our push-on connectors. We've got our vent top, the pipe that will take it to the bottom. The vent flange that will go on top of that fan. And we have all our wiring connectors and heat shrink. So next we're going to do a time lapse of the assembly and then at the end we'll show you how I use it. Just like this one, it's an old brother. So what's this good for? Well, I use it quite often to charge the battery packs that I have. Since it can go up to around you know, 50 volts, that handles the uh, 10S battery systems and anything below that. Again, we have our input side, output side, and then the 
values can be adjusted here. Here's one of the great reasons I use this is to power things like a fan here. This is a camping type fan, 12 volt system. Uh, but what if I have a battery that uh, is more than 12 volts? These are about 16, averaging 14.8. I've actually used these. It will run this, but it will overclock it, and so it'll run harder than it should. But if I want, I can just pump this sucker in. The display comes on. We could set the value right now. It's at 12 volts, 5 amps. Let's hook up our other wire here. All right, so we've got the fan hooked up here on the output side, the battery. If you notice on the reader here, we've got 12 volts, 5 amps. So if I power it on, now we're sending power into the system. And we got a nice little fan going on. One of the great things about this power supply is the variability. So if I wanted to slow this down a bit, I could go down to 11 volts, 10 volts, 9, 8, so forth. So I can get really fine control that the switch that come with it only gives me two speeds. Now I have basically infinite amount of speed between the voltages it can handle. Amperage is also capable of being controlled. So if I put this back up to 12 volts and then I decide to adjust the amperage, I can bring it down. Kind of do the same thing, even though it's probably better to do it with the voltage. So now I'm doing a quarter amp, 28.2 amp, so forth, and then turn it off. So you can use this for all kinds of things. Like I said, mostly I use it to charge batteries, but also for projects like this. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I have a link in the description to the electronics, and then also uh, to the project on Thingiverse for the 3D printed files. So uh, I'd love to hear back from you guys if anybody decides to make one. And your thoughts, leave them in the comment section. Thanks. Bye.